Yay. I am here alone. Do, 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 do. While I'm waiting, so what it's like, it's like a virtual chat room, basically. It's specially put aside for our class. Hey, Zoe. Thank you. Mother Gothel, Gorilla de Mille, Ursula, Dr. Casilio, Isma, and Gaston. Isma, Gaston, Hermes, Gaston. <laughs> Go back and do the smart book. Not till 11, Bootsy. Stop 
Well, I have nine minutes, so I can take her out quick, but I'm not, we're not going on a walk yet. Because she usually does have to pee every time. Yeah, that's all I need to get her halfway out there, help on my backpack out of here. Mm -hmm. So, so, it's starting to come back together again. Yeah, you know, you, you might have been overdoing it. I got yours, or someone said it maybe might be my sciatica. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I had one. Mm -hmm. Well, it happens. I have it in both hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so much of my legs, my legs are something else. It was mainly back pain. Oh man. Now, it all started when I was watching that there. Uh, I wanted to look on it on my own phone, on my own iPad. My headphones so I could hear it. No, she won't do it. Now, one scoop at 11, or a walk at 11, and then one scoop at 3. How does that sound? A 4 or a 1. You like that. Did she have to pee pee? Yeah, she had a pee. Poor Poopy had a pee. Should start coming in a couple in a couple of minutes. She is. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Becky. How you doing? Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Hi everyone. Um, Good morning. How are we doing? Good morning. We're doing. Okay. Let me turn down my phone. Okay. I am going to do one or two things and I will be right back and we'll get started. Okay. Okay. Got it. Be right back.
Yeah, it's, it's gonna need. Alrighty, looks like we got some people showing up, which is a good thing. Six so far. Yes. Okay. All right. Share my screen if I find it. Of course I can't find it. Let's try this. Hi, Jess. Hi, Becca. My son got the TV up so loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Are you? How's everything going, Miss Professor? Let me turn this dad going cartoon down. I'm good. I can't. I, I I can't take it anymore, y'all. I just want to say that. I, could somebody, please rescue me, please. Well, we're gonna be like your little support group for the next hour. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't take it, Lori. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm coming down with something. So this is wonderful. But I think it's just working too much. The allergies working. Too yeah. Much. And at least, you know, you've been in the house. It's just the regular cold and nothing else. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband had something when we came back. So but we don't know. He wasn't bad, you know, but he had a little fever and sore throat, a little cough. So who knows? But well if you need me, I'll come over there and help you <laughs> with your cold and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you want to do like like uh, that house swap thing? You know, I can come over to your house, you can come oh, over to mine. I would love that. Yes. <laughs> You could bring your husband to bring him on over here. You know, as you do a I don't have a husband. <laughs> bring yours here. <laughs> oh goodness. All righty, guys. Well, we have about eleven people. I think I'm going to get started. Um. So we are starting chapter sixteen today, which is on the statement of cash flow. And we're not going to get really heavy into it. I'm just going to introduce it to you, um, talk about it in general, and then so you can get into the reading and really take a good look at it over the next week on your own. And then next Wednesday, we reconvene and then we're going to get into some heavy lecture and explanation on it. Okay, so I don't want to give you all this explanation today and then you're going to be you know, kind of on hiatus for a week on, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we have time to do this. So, I am sharing a Word document. Hopefully you see it. Yes, no, it did not pop up yet. Hold on. Let me share nope. that again. No, it's coming. I screwed up. Okay, now you should see it. Almost. Let me, how about that? Look at that. All right, so. 
we're talking about the statement of cash flows. Okay, this is a formal financial statement. So remember back when you first took accounting 111, we said there was four financial statements. Well, we said it was the income statement, the statement of equity, and we've seen a couple statement of equities now. Statement of owner, statement of partner, statement of stockholders. So it all depends on the type of company. And then we had the balance sheet. And then if you had me, I said, oh, and then there's the statement of cash flows, which eh, we don't learn it in chapter one. You learn it in accounting 112. Welcome. Now it's time to learn this formal financial statement. And it is one of the newest financial statements. It came out while I was in college back in the um, 1980s, probably around 88, I think it came out. Um, all right, so thank you. So um, we're first gonna define it. We're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna share, share the book with you. We'll take a good look at it. Talk about the different parts of it in, in a more general sense. And like I said, we'll focus on the computation of each part when we return next Wednesday. So I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, wait, let me make sure I'm recording. Why isn't this recording? Uh-oh. Hold on one second. Um, well, that's okay. Hmm, I don't know why, but it's not recording for me, but that's okay, because I have the video. I'm gonna be working on the video today. Um, let me go back over to the book. And share that screen with you, so you can see. So, if we go to page, let me get my real book here, and I could give you the page number, and then I can find it on my computer screen. Oh, here's my book. All right, this one I need, oh, there it is. I tell my office is a disaster at home. Okay, page. Find a nice one here. Find one all done and beautiful looking. And that's not what I want. That's not. There we go. So if you take a look on page 581, and I'm gonna to go to that page as well. Let me see if that's what I wanna see. Oh, one page back. So page 581 is a completed, statement of cash flow. So let's just take a look at this. You could see we have different sections. You'd see the first one is called cash flows from operating activities. And that may look a little crazy. It'll make more sense next week. Okay, but take a look at that. Then we have what's called cash flows from investing activities and then cash flows from financing activities. And then we sum up the totals for each category. So there was a positive 20,000, positive 2,000, and a negative 17,000. And that tells us overall for the year if our cash increased or decreased. So, just keep that page open. I'm gonna stop sharing this and go ahead back over to my Word document. So let's really, oh, come on. Let's define this thing. So a statement of cash flows reports how cash 
changes over a period of time. So it's a formal financial statement that's showing decision makers how the cash changes over usually a year because when we're doing our financial statements, it could be for the year, but it's whatever period of time our financial statements are for. Now, why do we do this? Why is it so important? Well, why? Because no financial statement talks about cash. Remember, our income statement isn't how much cash we made or how we spent our cash. It's how much net income or profit we made. And we base the measurement of net income or profit on accrual accounting, business activity, not cash activity. So this tells decision makers how the company spends or makes cash. And that's one of the most important assets, right? So it only makes sense that we would have a financial statement just focusing on cash. If we didn't, okay, and I'm going back to your book and I'm not gonna pull it up on the screen. You should have your book in front of you. If you go to a balance sheet, go to page 574. If we didn't have a statement of cash flow to talk about how the company spent cash, the only thing decision makers would see is the cash balance on our balance sheet and if it increased or decreased. So there is Genesis balance sheet. Normally, financial statements are presented for more than one year, meaning it's only a year's worth of information in a column, but we'll show last year's information and this year's information. So Genesis can see, or somebody looking at Genesis's balance sheet could say, oh, their cash increased from 12,000 to 17,000. Well, good for them. But why? That's what this statement is going to tell decision makers. Okay, so we keep it very organized. The statement of cash flow is presented in categories of activities the company does. Every company does these three types of activities. The first one are operating activities. And that's the first section we'll be looking at when we come back. Now, what are we reporting in here? This is where the company reports um, cash inflow, so money coming in, and cash outflows, money they spend on their operating activities. The major day-to-day -day business. Okay, so that's what's being reported in this section of the statement of cash flow. What kind of cash came in? What kind did we, how much did we spend on our day-to-day -day operations of our business? Now you're going to see, and we're gonna show you that we have a choice with how we present this information. And I'll show you on page, I know it's in your book because I was just looking at it. Where the heck did it go? Oh, come on you. Let me find it on my, um, I'm going to stop sharing and go back over. I'm going to be flipping flopping here, so just bear with me. 
I'm back in your book and I think I'll find the page in a second. I think it's on page 574 area, but I'll show you this. That's not it. Sorry guys, just bear with me. That's it. I'm not sure what page that's on. The direct versus the indirect. Okay, oh, it's at the bottom of page 573. But when it comes to reporting information in the operating activities area of the statement of cash flow, the FASB has given us a choice on how we show that information. We're going to learn what's called the indirect method of reporting the operating activities. Why? Here's why. 99% of companies use that method. The other 1% use what's called the direct method. Now, as an accounting major, you'll learn both methods in your more advanced accounting courses. But for the majority of you who aren't accounting majors, you're going to be reading a statement of cash flow. And it's probably going to be an indirect presentation. So let me just show you really quick the difference between the two. Here is the indirect method of presenting the statement of cash flow for the operating area. And this is on page 574 of your book. The indirect method, here's what we're accomplishing. If you're like, what is all of that stuff? It'll make more sense next week. But what we're doing in the operating section is transforming net income which is an accrual basis measurement of operating activity. Remember accrual accounting says, don't wait till you get cash or receive cash or spend cash to record a transaction. No, record activity as it happens when your revenues earned or your expenses occur. So net income is a measurement of business activity from operations not cash. What we do in the indirect method is we say, well, at least we have a starting point to measure business activity for our time period. Now let's transform net income business activity to cash flow from operations. So essentially what we're doing in these two steps in here is we're changing net income from an accrual net income to a cash accounting net income. So what we're saying is if we did use cash accounting, which means record revenue when you receive the cash, record expenses when you pay for them, that would have been our income, net income under the cash basis. So that's what we're doing during this process of the cash flow statement, pulling out stuff that has nothing to do with cash or adding extra stuff in that isn't right now in net income as cash, transforming it so that we start with the cruel net income and change it to cash net income. That's what you do in the indirect method. Now the direct method, just so you can see it, I think it's in your appendix here. No, it's on the next, nope, it's not. Where'd they put that sucker? Hold on, I think it's in your appendix. I'll show you what it looks like, just so you could see. The direct method, if you, it's in appendix B. Let me find it. Not yet, um, says this, we're going to 
tell everybody, give them the information right on the statement of cash flow of how we received our money and how we spent it. I'm still trying to find the appendix here. There we go. And this is on page 591. So you're not gonna learn this. I just wanna show you the difference. The direct method says, don't transform net income to cash net income. You determine, accountant, how much cash did you get from your customers? And show that as a positive amount. How much did you pay for inventory, cash-wise? How much did you pay for your other expenses? Okay, and subtract those so that people can see, here's how much we got from our customers, that's our cash from our operating activities, and here's all this stuff we had to pay for to operate our business on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the FASB loves this method because you don't need to know anything about accounting to understand it. But it's a pain in the butt to make from an accountant's perspective. So since we have a choice, we pick, the accountants pick the method that's easier on us because we have a choice. And that's why, although this is very direct and comes right out and says, Here's how much, there's where your money came from for operations. There's where you paid it, okay? From an accountant's perspective, we hate making these things <laughs> because we have to do a lot of work behind them. So we like the indirect method. Now, the indirect method doesn't necessarily help the person who doesn't understand accounting too much because it is, um, weird what do you mean what are you doing here you know people are looking at like are you crazy what's going on but that's what we're doing transforming net income into net cash from operations any questions on that and i'll explain this all to you in here in a few seconds we're going to talk more about that okay i'm going to stop sharing and now i'm going to go back over to my word. And let's talk about the next major section of the statement of cash flow, which is investing activities. And this is a normal major activity of a company. So this is where the company reports cash inflow and cash outflows from investments. What are we focused on here? how much cash was spent or received on long-term assets. So that's what's focused on in this section because that's where our investments are in long-term assets, property, plants, and equipment, long-term investment category, intangibles. So how much money did we receive? Sorry, I have to let my dog get. Receive or spend on these types of assets during the period of time we're looking at. So we'll be taking a look at how we determine that more probably next Friday. So let me take you back to a to the statement of cash flow so you can see it. And um, I think the one we were looking at was on page 581. Go back to that one on page 581, if you will. I don't know what page I'm on there. Move that. 578, 579. Go to the next one. Okay, so going back to the one on Genesis. So there's Genesis's um, 
operating activity area. Now take a look at their cash flow from investing activities. So whenever a company sells a plant asset, we want to report how much cash we received here. Whenever they buy a cash asset or a plant asset, we want to report how much we spent. Same with long-term investments. Remember the um, debt or equity investments? That's what we want to report in here. Um, notes receivables. So if we loan the companies money on a long-term basis, that's an investing activity. We're making money on that. Intangible assets. These are, again, investments that we have to make. So if we buy any or sell any. So we're focused on cash coming in or going out from the purchase or sale of these types of assets, long-term assets. And we'll be looking at them more next week. Any questions on that? Go back to my Word document. Let's talk about the final section of the statement of cash flow and usually the final type of activity of a company, financing activities. So this is where we report cash inflows and cash outflows from financing the company. How much cash was um, spent or received from borrowing um, long on notes, let's put it that way, on notes or loans and from equity transactions. So now we're focused on liabilities and equity, because that's how we finance our company. Think about it, finance is how we get our money to run our company. We either get it from borrowing money in loans or from selling equity. Now, there could be other transactions involved with equity besides selling stock. If they, if any other kind of transaction occurs in our equity area, where cash is involved, we report it in the financing area. And we'll take a look at that in a second. So that's our focus on that part of the balance sheet. Did we borrow or pay on any loans during the time period? Did we have any kind of cash coming in or going out from stockholder equity transactions? If we did, we report their impact on cash flow in this area. So I'll let you get that jotted down. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'll come back to the Word document in a second. But I'm gonna go back to our book now. <clears throat> Let's take a look at Genesis. Here is their cash flow from financing activities. They received cash from issuing stock. They ca paid cash to pay off a loan, retire notes. And look at, they paid cash for dividends. So there is an equity transaction that affects cash. Paying a dividend reduces equity, but isn't buying stock. It's paying dividends. So that's a common equity transaction that will decrease our financing area. So we net those together and then we could see so that they overall used cash in their financing area. So up in this area, the operating area, you can see we're focused on the income statement and if you look down here, we're dealing with current assets. Those are all current assets up here and current liabilities. So 
we look and use our income statement and our balance sheet to create this statement. The operating area focuses on the income statement and current assets and current liabilities and how cash changed because of those items. And if you think about it, current assets and current liabilities are what we call operating assets or oper and operating liabilities. These are assets and liabilities created from our normal operations. Accounts receivable, that's from selling to people. Inventory, that's what we sell day to day. Prepaid expenses, we have to pay for those to run our business day to day. Accounts payable. Now, the only oddball thing here is interest payable. I remember learning this going, whoa, interest has to do with long-term loans or loans. Why is that up here? For whatever reason, the FASB wants it up in the operating area. So it may not make a lot of sense, but that's where it gets reported. And then income taxes payable. That's a normal part of day-to-day -day operations. So this will make more sense next Wednesday, but we account for those items on the statement of cash flow. Then down in the investing area, we account for any cash changes in long-term assets. And then in the financing area, we account for any changes in loans, including long-term debt and equity. So we look at both financial statements and all the items we have, and we account for how cash changed because of these items. Now, once we have a subtotal for each category, then we could say, oh, okay, overall, cash increased or decreased. Here you go, decision maker, here's how. We brought 20,000 in from our operations, we brought 20,000 in from investing activities because we sold an asset for $2,000, but we used up some of that cash from our financing activities. We paid some dividends, we paid off some loans, and we issued some more stock. So that $5,000 change is defined now on the statement of cash flow. Now we still have to prove that we're right. So we say, okay, it changed 5,000 positive during the year. It started at 12,000. Here's our cash balance at the end of the year. So we prove it out, but that is a statement of cash flow. Any questions so far? Okay. I'm gonna go back over here. So, there's one more thing that will be reported on a statement of cash flow, and it's called non cash investing and financing activities. And this is explained. I think it's near the end of the chapter, actually. I think it's explained more at the end. Sometimes there are transactions that occur that are material, they're major transactions, but they have no cash involvement. And they typically will be investing and financing activities. So these are um, long-term asset and long-term liabilities or equity transactions that have no cash component within the transaction. So that means there was no cash, cash involved in the transaction but the transaction affected a long-term asset and 
maybe a long-term liability or maybe an equity or at least two of them. So let me give you some examples so you know this. Purchase a building with a notes payable. That has no cash involvement. At no time was cash debited or credited in this type of transaction. But it's a major change to a long-term asset and a long-term liability. It's not that we ignore that type of transaction. It's just not part of cash. So it's not in the body of the statement of cash flow. It's actually reported on the very bottom of the statement of cash flow. Hey, we had this happen. Okay, and I'll pull up an example. Here's another one. Um, purchase equipment with common stock. So the company purchased an asset, equipment, with common stock. They didn't pay for it with cash or a loan. Or paid off a bonds payable with common stock. Okay, so in this third one, it's only a liability and an equity. They paid off a bonds payable, not with cash, but with common stock. They converted it. So there's different types of transactions that could fall into this category. So when you have a major, a material transaction occur that has no impact on cash, but does impact your long-term assets or liabilities or equity, you must report it on the statement of cash flow. But it's reported after you do your proof of cash. I'm looking to see, I don't think your author puts one in here. I don't know why, but I want to show you that. So let me call up one of my standby corporations. Let me share my. I guess Starbucks, they should have something. We'll see. I think I'd saved this statement already, so I could just call it up. Okay, so there's their statement of earnings, balance sheet, statement of equity. Oh, nope, there's their statement of cash flow. So this is Starbucks. Take note, it is the indirect method. They start with net earnings and convert it to cash from equity operating activities. Then they have investing activities. They purchased some investments. They sold some investments. They bought some more property, plants, and equipment. And they did some other crazy stuff there. They're financing activities. They um, took more loans out. They paid some long-term loans off. They paid a cash dividend. They purchased common stock. They bought treasury stock. Oh, uh, curse you, there's nothing here. I guess they didn't do anything that is a non-cash thing. Hmm, well that didn't pan out for me. But you can see here, they report how cash changed for the period of time. Here's where it started, here where it ends. So you can see, this is how we actually do one of these statements. Um, for um, next week, I'll make sure I have a statement of cash flow that shows you that non-cash area, but it would be reported down in here. Oh, let me try one more company if you guys would bear with me. Um, could I try? Let's try Apple. <clears throat> Maybe they'll have something. Oh, 
come on. I'm looking to see if annual filing, there we go. I might have to, let me know if you can't see the apple. There we go. Go right to the statement of cash flows. There it is. So here's Apple's statement of cash flow. Again, look at they start with net income. They do all of these things with their current assets and current liabilities. Here's their investing activities. Here's their financing activities. Hmm. And they don't have any either makes me look like a liar, doesn't it? Let me see something. If they might have them listed in the notes to the financial statements. No, I don't see anything here. So maybe they didn't have anything. That happens, okay? So I'll try. I'll see if I can find a company that has them so you can actually see what it looks like on the statement of cash flow. All right. I think I'm going to come back over to my book. So one more time statement of cash flow. It's where we're reporting how cash changed over a period of time, formal financial statement. Starts with the operating section, which reports how cash changed due to our normal day-to-day -day operations. We will be using our income statement, current assets and current liabilities to create that section of the cash flow statement. Then investing activities. This is where we report how cash changes from buying and selling long-term assets, such as investments property, plants, and equipment, and intangible assets. Cash flows from financing is where we report the change to cash due to borrowing or paying off notes payable, bonds payable, and equity um, changes due to cash, like issuing stock, paying for dividends. We then net those three categories together and reconcile cash out to say, here's how it changed, there's where it started, that's our final balance. That final balance must agree with the amount on your balance sheet. Okay, and if we go back over to this where they originally showed the balance sheet, I think it's on, uh, yep, up here. Go one more page. Here it is. There it is. It went from 12,000 up to 17,000. So if that doesn't agree to your statement of cash flow, you did something wrong on the statement of cash flow. Do you guys have any questions so far? All right, I think that's all I'm going to have for today then. We're going to come back next Wednesday. Remember Friday and Monday, we're off for the holiday. And we'll come back next Wednesday and start talking about the operating section. Make sure you have that down good. Watch for my video to come out if you wanted to listen to it before then. And I guess I will see you next Wednesday. Anybody have any questions? I do, Professor. I'm sorry again for my background noise. No, just that's okay. Curious, I know that um, just as a regular accountant major, because I know when you go over the financial statements, like the ones we did even from our first accounting class, mm -hmm. I don't remember a lot of it. So if we have a, like for the, those of us who are accounting majors, is there going to be another class where we're going to go over all those? Okay, because I'm like, I'm not going to know any of that stuff. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, we go into the balance sheet, income statement, all of them really deep in the first part of Intermediate Accounting 1. You have a whole chapter on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Oh, you're welcome. Okie doke. Anybody else anything? Happy Easter and see you next time. Okay, everybody have a great holiday. Happy Easter if you celebrate and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Take care.